Renovating a large triple expansion model steam engine, part 1, assessment. This is quite a large model steam engine, and it has a plastic strip on the front which says, this model of a triple expansion engine was made by the late Professor Sir Charles Inglis. So I went onto the internet and typed Sir Charles Inglis into Google, and the only one I could find was a gentleman who died in 1952, and herein we have a problem because I don't think this engine is as old as that. So if he made it in his final years, in the early 50s, mm, I'm not sure. Anyway, if anyone knows more than I do, please enlighten me. I was born in 1953, and in the early part of my childhood, in the 50s, I don't remember ever having anything that would print a ticket like is on the front of this engine. Of course, it may have been added later. I really don't know. If anyone knows anything about this engine, please enlighten us all. As I said at the beginning, and in the title, this really is a large model steam engine. So I'm using my action man, who's just been hanging around the workshop for a while, to show how big it is. An action man is approximately one foot tall. And as you can see, this engine really is substantial. It's time to connect some compressed air to the engine. And the first thing I notice is a loud hissing noise coming from the valve chest. This valve chest is a piston valve chest, which is distinctly different to a slide valve. A slide valve is a square valve that slides over a port, and it's held onto the port by steam pressure. So the more pressure you have, the harder it is for the linkage to move the valve. This is not so with a piston valve. A piston valve is like a bobbin in a cylinder, and it covers and uncovers ports at the right time relative to the eccentric. And these ports alternatively admit and exhaust the steam. Most full-size steam engines use piston valves, particularly in the latter days of steam. In the very early days, slide valves were used. And the good thing about slide valves for model use is that they don't wear out. Well, they do if you don't oil them, but generally speaking, they wear very well. As the saying goes, slide valves wear in, piston valves wear out. And in this clip, you can clearly see the piston valve down in the piston valve chest. And if I can rotate the crankshaft, which is very stiff, the piston valve should go up and down. At the beginning of the previous clip, you can see that the valve does actually move in the valve chest, but not very much because I cannot turn over the crankshaft by hand. What I'm looking at at the moment is the engineering standard. It seems that this valve chest cover only fits in one position. It's still very well engineered. I have a friend who goes by the name of Roger, that's because it is his name, and he'll know who he is if he's watching this video. And when Roger makes a steam cylinder cover with lots of holes in it, the cylinder cover will always fit on the cylinder and the holes will line up in any position, which is more than I can say about some of the cylinder covers I've made in the past. The main problem with this engine, as far as I can see, is that it's not really finished. For instance, the main valve rod on the second cylinder, which is connected to the eccentric of course, is held to the fork of the piston valve rod, just with a piece of round bar. So this is a temporary measure. Running the engine would not be good with this in place, because it would just fall out, and then that could be fairly catastrophic. Although I must admit it's very convenient for quickly disconnecting the piston valve from the eccentric rod. I do not have a drawing for this engine, so I'm going to have to busk this somewhat. But I've done plenty of busking as a musician in the past, so this is no different really. Except, no, it's very different if I think about it. It looks to be a freelance design, so there's no drawing. One of the first things I intend to do is figure out how to adjust the piston valves. It wasn't obvious looking at the first piston valve, so I'll have to remove one of them and see what the adjustment is. At this stage I'm trying to estimate how many hours it's going to take me to fix this engine and make it go, and because it is so big and has so many nuts and bolts, it could take a long time. And as time equals money, I have to estimate what it's going to cost the owner of the engine. There are of course some parts still to make for this engine, quite a few nuts and bolts, and the one-offs, the not commercial items. And also the condenser isn't finished either, quite a lot of work. But I do like a challenge. Before I can begin pulling this engine apart and starting the surgery and the subsequent rebuild, I do need to finish some jobs I'm already doing. I do have a problem if I get too many jobs that are unfinished. Contrary to some of the comments I receive from viewers, 
I do have to still work and earn a living. I have my recording studio and my video business. But the good news is, next January 2018, I retire. I'm not going to retire though. I'm just going to sit on the porch playing my banjo and smoking a pipe. No, I'm not going to do that. I'll just be able to do some more steam engine videos, more than I do already. But for the moment, I do have to put this one back under the bench. But hopefully it's only going to be under the bench while I finish the two current projects I'm on with. So that's it for now, and all I've got to say is thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.